What's up my friends, welcome back, you're watching Harv, video order stuff, and in this video I'm checking out the Sony a7 IV for video use only. I want to show you some important things about this camera and just share my experience with it so far. So there's a lot that I like with this, I've also had some issues with it, and there's definitely some things you need to know if you're considering buying one. Just one quick bit of housekeeping before we dive in, these videos are powered by my Patreon backers and it's a non-profit thing, the idea being that with the funds from Patreon I buy equipment and then give it away to you after I've reviewed it. Buying gear like this gets really expensive and I did buy this with my own cash, I didn't, Sony didn't send it to me for free and my Patreon is just a really elegant way of improving my content plus you get the opportunity to win some amazing gear so it's really win-win. All the details for my Patreon you find in the description box below and speaking of gear being expensive, I mean I mentioned already that this is, I bought this with my own cash so this is not to be given away, this is my version, but I feel like a while ago this was given away to lots of YouTubers for free by Sony and now is the time that you get the real review from people who paid for it with their own cash. And of course I'd recommend watching till the end because I really do have some hot takes about this camera which I think uh, you might appreciate. Just to stress again, this video is entirely about the video side of things and not about stills at all. If you're a purely stills shooter, I, I'm going to make the massive assumption that this is uh, incredible for stills and I, I have every reason to believe it would be. If you shoot any video, then there will be some things in this video that will really help you. The purpose of the a7 IV, of course, is to be a really good all-rounder hybrid camera that can give you quality stills and video to compete with the Canon R6 and that kind of camera. So to kick off, how does the image look from the a7 IV? Here you can see three clips, A, B and C, and this is what's known as a triangle test. One of these clips is either the A7S 3 and the other two the A7 IV, or just one of the clips is the A7 IV and the other two are the A7S 3 My question is, can you tell which is the odd one out and which camera is it from? Triangle testing really is the way forward with these kind of tests. If you think you know which one is the odd one out, just pop A, B or C in the comment section plus which camera you think it's from. I'll reveal all at the end of the video. Next, let me show you a little montage of clips shot with the a7 IV. One really interesting thing that I noticed with the footage is I think I'm seeing some form of, I guess you would call it moiré, in the trees and I suspect this is something to do with the downscaling process. As you know, the a7 IV is downscaling a 7K signal down to 4K and you get incredibly detailed footage as you can see. But I wonder if this is doing something odd that's giving us this weird effect. I'm hoping this comes across on all monitors. But what I'm seeing right now is it's got that same jarring effect that Moiré has. So the a7 IV is really customizable like all Sony cameras and I thought you'd find it helpful for me to show you how I've set up my version for a really fast videography workflow. I've actually set it up exactly the same as the way I've got my a7S III and I've got it set the same whether you're in stills or video mode. Custom 1 I've got set as a focus magnifier. Custom 2 is my white balance. Custom 3 goes to my menu where I can toggle between finder and monitor, file formats, movie settings and of course format cards. The last two significant customised buttons I have is the custom 4 slash trash can button which goes to the picture profile and rotating the wheel changes ISO. So who is this camera for? Well I would say a photos first, video second guy. If you work with mainly video, if you like to shoot with your camera on a gimbal, if you like lots of different codec options, if you like really good high frame rates, get the a7S III. And on that note, whilst making this video, I found it really hard not to compare the a7 IV to 
the a7S III, which I'm shooting on right now. Before the a7 IV came out, I was hearing a lot of people perpetuating the narrative of the a7IV's video will be better because it's scaling down a 7K image. And I would say this is simply not true from my experience of it. In fact, I would say that this scaling down process is what's holding the a7 IV back from being an even better video camera. Side by side, you can see there is a slight difference in color between the a7 IV and a7S III. I use the same white balance settings for both cameras, and you can see that the a7S III is a little more magenta, the a7 IV leans a little bit more to the green. However, I don't think this should be a concern really because they are very easily matched. With just a couple of tweaks, I was able to get them really close and these two cameras actually work great together. In terms of sharpness, you can definitely expect a little more from the a7 IV. When zoomed in, you can see this is fairly noticeable. However, bear in mind, I am very zoomed in here, over 600% zoomed in. Next we're diving into low light and the word on the street with the a7 IV is that the low light will be very good. And again, the theory is that because it's scaling down a 7K signal, there will be a certain amount of noise reduction that comes with that naturally. And here you can see what looks like a very well lit shot but in actual fact, it's very low light. I've got the lens shut all the way down to f16 and the ISO up at 16,000. And it really looks okay. It's definitely passable, but when comparing it to the Sony a7S III, the still, I would say, undisputed king of low light, it looks like this. Also very good looking considering the high ISO. And I suspect that YouTube will be doing some form of compression. So I'm not sure whether this will translate, but now let's zoom in to 400% and see what's going on. When we do, we can see that the noise on the a7 IV is far, far worse than the a7S III. It's a really hard thing to quantify, but I would say there's at least double the noise. The a7S III just looks far cleaner. So, myth busted. The a7 IV is good in low light, but nowhere near as good as the a7S III. I actually took both the a7IV and a7S III out to film a music video the other day, thinking that I would film most of it on the a7 IV, being, you know, a new toy and all that. But for practical reasons that ended up not being the case at all. I think, well, great, let's go and do this next gimbal shot using the a7 IV because it's got that great autofocus. But then I'd remember that the rolling shutter isn't great. And throughout the day, I found myself having similar thoughts like I'll go and do this next section with the a7 IV and then think, oh, balls. I actually need to do part of this sequence in slow motion and I'd rather have 120p full frame than 4K 60 with a crop any day. I was filming for over six hours that day and I never found myself in a position where it would have been advantageous to switch to the a7 IV. Now here's my big list of pros and cons with the a7 IV and I'm going to start with the pros because I'm a glass half full kind of guy. Firstly the pros and it has amazing autofocus. Its eye detect AF is as good as it is on the a7S III except Sony have added animal AF. I've tried it and it works amazingly. There are some stunning new tools that have been added. Focus Map, which shows you a visual representation of what's in focus across your frame. It's a very cool feature, which I'm never gonna use as I prefer external monitors. Sony have also added breathing compensation where it will correct for any focus breathing. Breathing is where you find the field of view changes depending on your focal point and video guys generally hate it. So this feature is amazing. This is potentially game changing. Just be aware that Sony are saying it only works with Sony lenses and inevitably there's a small crop. You get a lovely image from the video side of things. It's noticeably sharper than the a7S III when you zoom in. When you're not zoomed in, it's not so noticeable. But the one thing I found is I found the colors to be slightly wonky and generally I prefer the color from the a7S III. The addition of the video stills SQ mode switch is really great. Just make sure you go into the menu, setup, operation customize, different set for still slash movie and select which setting you want to differ between the two modes. I've got it set so the aperture, shutter speed, ISO and picture profile are different. And then the cons and the first time I used the a7 IV it overheated after just 22 minutes but I hadn't yet changed the switch off temperature to high. After that, it recorded for over an hour and 50 minutes until the battery died. However, don't forget that there can be a cumulative effect when using the camera. It seems to always run pretty hot to the touch and I've already heard of people getting only nine minutes with the temperature warning set to high. I live in the UK, which isn't warm, 
particularly right now, and just because it was totally fine for me, it may not be if you're lucky enough to live somewhere warm. So far, I found the colour not quite as good as the A7S III, and of course, this is completely subjective, but I've just found that there's something a little off with it. I'm wondering if it's related to the downscaling process. Don't get me wrong, they're still both great, and you can match footage from the two fairly easily. The 4K 60p mode has a 1.5x crop, this is known, and it's been widely disclosed, so it feels a little bit unfair having it as a con, but for me, it kind of sucks. The reason it exists, of course, is so that the camera has less downscaling to do, and can give you a higher frame rate. Seeing as the a7 IV gets hot at 24 frames per second, I'm not surprised about the crop, but it feels a little bit shoehorned in, like Sony had to include 4K60 somehow with this camera or people would have kicked off. Personally, I am done with crops, so if you need good slow-mo, get the a7S III. It's known that the rolling shutter could be better on the a7IV. It exists because the sensor is having to scale a 7K signal down to 4K. It is what it is, and this is why I would rather use the a7S III for gimbal shots. The EVF when shooting video just looks awful. You get that horrible rolling shutter tearing thing when you move the camera. It's really jarring and makes me want to never use it, even though it's useful when you're shooting with a minimal setup in bright sunlight. This happens whether you set the display quality to high or find a frame rate to high. I will say that the EVF is fantastic for stills. It's so good it almost feels like an optical viewfinder. Not necessarily cons, but features I wish the a7IV had. I would have loved to have seen the cool style of top display that the Nikon Z9 has. A lower native ISO in S-Log3, 640 or 400 would have been preferable to ISO 800. The last thing is something that the A7S III has, and that's the option to have a red box appear around the edge of the rear screen when you hit record. I didn't like this at first on the A7S III, but I missed it once I turned it off. For the life of me, I can't find this option in the A7IV menu, and... I miss it. In my opinion, the competing photography and videography features hold this camera back from being perfect. Photographers want megapixels, snappy autofocus, high burst rate, raw files with great dynamic range. Video guys want cameras that you can rely on and won't overheat. We don't want noticeable rolling shutter. We want slow motion without a crop. The a7 IV can't fully focus on either photography or videography, so if you'll excuse the overused saying, it's a jack of all trades, master of none. Still a damn good camera. And now it's time to reveal which clip was shot with which camera. It's really difficult because they look so similar and in case you're wondering, I did intentionally reframe each one slightly just to throw you off the scent a bit. But the left and right hand clips were shot on the a7 IV and the middle one on the a7S III. The telltale signs for me are you get slightly more detail on the a7 IV clips. And the a7S III to me looks slightly richer slightly more magenta, but super close, really well done if you got it right. So I'd say if you're upgrading from an a7 III or one of Sony's APS-C A6000 line to an a7 IV, you'll love the new upgrades and I'd say video-wise you'll find, you'll find it a, a quite a big upgrade in terms of the image quality. However, do not let anyone tell you that the a7 IV is a better or more capable video camera than the a7S III. It's, it's not. I'm very happy to make the bold, albeit subjective statement that the a7S III unequivocally shoots better video than the a7IV, and if you're mainly a video guy, the a7S III makes so much more sense. Don't get me wrong, I love the a7IV and I love the footage you get from it, except for a few things that I mentioned. For me, it's an amazing B camera for video and it will match brilliantly with the a7S III and even the FX3. I'm gonna take the a7IV on some trips and it'll be my main camera for video and stills. I'm gonna put it through its paces big time. I'm due to visit Norway next year, so that should be really good. And maybe after that I'll do like a long-term review and um, see if I've changed my mind. I'm also gonna be making lots more content around the a7 IV and I'm gonna test it and um, you know, let me know what you want to see tested. I can do colors, sharpness, low light, anything like that. Let me know in the comments section and get subscribed so you don't miss those. Anyway, that's all for now. I just hope you found this interesting and helpful. That's always the goal with these videos anyway. I want to hear from you. Do you own an a7 IV? What do you think? Did you upgrade from the a7 III and was the jump in quality noticeable to you? Have you had overheating problems? I want to know in the comment section below. Let's do it. 
I've got a large archive of videos about videography on this channel, of which YouTube has handpicked this video for you, and the one underneath is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys. Bye.